the spirits business has been taking share from beer and wine now for a long, long time, um, and that includes the summer months. And so we feel pretty good about um, the outlook um, for the upcoming several quarters. And in terms of uh, the, the just past results, 6% down in the share price, uh, what, what do you think explains that, uh, and, and in, in particular uh, from the high end to the low end products? Yeah, I mean, I think, well, first of all, our portfolio skews very much to the premium side of things, and we delivered 6% top line growth for the year. So we feel pretty good about that. Um, I think if there was any disappointment, it is maybe a surprise at the level of investment we made in the fourth quarter. And, and we expect to continue to making um, into next year, but we see a lot of opportunity. We're putting a lot of money into advertising right now, particularly behind the Jack Daniels brands, but really across the rest of the portfolio. And um, we continue on the SGNA line. We're making a number of sort of step up investments right now. Some of it's in the world of digital. We have a group called Integrated Marketing Communications where we're hiring a whole lot of new people to, to focus on the digital space. And we're putting in a new sales force um, called the Emerging Brands Group to focus on our ultra premium brands. We're taking that model that's already in the US and exporting it to Europe. So there have been some elevated costs out there that might have caught a few people by surprise. Um, but still, we feel pretty good about the long term. This is a 150-year-old company controlled by the Brown family. Um, that really has a very long-term outlook. I mean, we talk sometimes in terms of generations as opposed to certainly not quarters. So uh, we feel pretty good about our, our place right now. More specifically, gross margin falling 3%, I think, was, was the big surprise, as you outlined. And, and I know you're spending more on advertising, but I just, I just outlined the litany of, of things that are weighing on profitability at Campbell's Soup, which is right down there at the bottom of the S&P with your stock right now. Is some of it that, that inflation and supply chain pressure that they're dealing with? Yeah, I mean, the gross margin pressure, we've been under that for three, four years now. Um, that's composed of really two main things. One is increasing wood costs. So the wood that we use to make our barrels for to make all the whiskey, and then agave costs. Those two have been, those two cost inflation challenges have been in place for a while. We actually think we've passed that. Um, and we expect some of those costs to actually go the other way. So there'll be tailwinds as we move into next fiscal year. We are not seeing the same supply chain challenges that I've heard about in some of the other CPG companies. We are seeing some pressure on our glass side, um, you know, that we, we, we have had to lower inventories a little bit, but it's not at the point where it's, I call it a financial um, challenge for us yet. Where are you at the moment on pre-made cocktails? Yeah, well, you've, I, I've seen some of the other interviews you've all done. The RTD business has been, has exploded over the last year. It's a business, I mean, the Jack Daniels and Cola, Jack and Ginger um, business is a 12 million case business around the world. 80, 85% of that is outside of the United States. And so we have a very big RTD business in Germany and Australia and uh, pockets all over Europe. Um, and then we have an 8 million case new mix business down in Mexico. So those are, that is our biggest RTD business. The U.S., which is where everybody is is um, interested in these days, we have Jack Daniels Country Cocktails, it's called, um, which we signed a partnership with Pabst a couple of months ago. That's just getting started right now. But um, as you may know, um, RTDs um, sell a lot in the convenience channel, a lot in the grocery channel, and our traditional wholesaler, Spirits Wholesaler Network, just wasn't getting to those to those stores. And so um, we're really looking forward to this partnership with PAPS and getting a whole lot more distribution points and, um, you know, hopefully uh, continue to grow that business, which grew fantastically last year and was up something like 80 percent year over year. Big Jack and Ginger fan here, Lawson. Yeah. I have to ask you about the, uh, the European tariffs on whiskey and, and bourbon. As a sign of good faith, they, they stopped that 25 percent tariff, which was in retaliation for the steel and aluminum tariffs that the Trump administration put on Europe, though it's not clear that the Biden administration is going to reverse that steel and aluminum tariff. So, so what are your plans right now, given that uncertainty and potentially massive tariff, which was set to rise to 50 percent? Yeah, they, what happened? So we've been under this 25 percent tariff. It's three years, three years now. So it has been a very painful episode um, for this company as we are by far the largest American whiskey company in the world. And so in a lot of ways, we've looked at this like it's a tariff on us. And there are days when we've asked, how in the world did we find ourselves in the middle of this? But I do think that there have been some positive signs lately. And in the G7 meeting, there is some hope that some conversations can happen that will make, you know, that will make them get better. And that hopefully both the U.S., the U.K. and the Euro and the Europe group all um, come together to try to settle these these 
crazy tariffs um, that we've all been under. We'll see. Um, I've, I've expected this to go away several times over the last three years, and it hasn't happened. I haven't been right yet, but uh, we're, we're only hopeful that cooler heads will prevail. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.